Miss Eland. The report. Thank you. Messages. Information. Q21 answer negative. Q46 satellite link effective. Q9700. The computer readouts available from today. Have them put straight through to me, will you? Yes, sir. Mr. Freeman to see you, sir. All right, Mr. Freeman. But the girl in reception calls me Alec. So? Well, doesn't that inflame you with jealousy? Obviously, it doesn't. But soft, what light through yonder window breaks? It is the east. And Juliet is the sun. Voice print, positive identification, 97. Freeman, Alec E. all the tests. All of them. I bet. Keep you a moment, Alec. Trouble? Oh, why else would I send for you? Take a look at this. That's Westbrook Electronics, isn't it? Yeah. What's left of it? Well, what happened? For ten years, there have been setbacks. We've had uh, accidents miscalculations, errors of judgment, and other mishaps. Let's put Westbrook Electronics down to other mishaps. You mean a UFO? Well, there's no proof. So bang goes the Utronic project, just when we thought we really had something to track them down. Now, don't panic, Alec. The Utronic equipment is safe. It wasn't in the building. It's intact, fully tested, and ready for shipment. The breakthrough. Shadow have had Moonbase and the other satellites operational for the past few months. There have been a few UFO sightings, but no interceptions. We've got the teeth. Soon we'll have the eyes. Now, Freeman, you know how important this is to our whole organization. Now, the Utronic design team and the equipment are ready to be picked up in Los Angeles and flown here to England. Now, I'm making you responsible for the security of the entire operation. I mean you, personally. Right. Well, it must be quite a while since you landed an SST. Just let's say it's part of the personal service. Shadow Control, this is Seagull X-ray. Confirm arrival, Stevenson Base, Los Angeles, 0835. Takeoff schedule, 1100 hours. Roger, Seagull X-ray. Call Moon Base, will you? Yes, sir. Status check. 
Target? Affirmative. Magnetic field? Check. Saturation density? Green. Resonator? Affirmative. Code? OK. Displacements? Go. Filters? Check. Fluctuation? Affirmative. Reflex? Excuse me. Right. Shadow control for you, Lieutenant. Right. Lieutenant Ellis. Good morning, Gay. I think I might have some action for you. Now, I want Moonbase put on yellow alert from 1045 to track Seagull X-ray. Now it's carrying shadow VIPs on the Utronic equipment. So let's keep everybody on their toes. We can't afford to take chances. Roger. Joan, announce a yellow alert for 1045. Yes, Lieutenant. And complete the status check. I think this is going to be for real. I'm going to take a break. I'll be back about 10.30. OK. Moon base will be on yellow alert from 10.45 Earth elapsed time. Repeat, 10.45 EET. All space trackers to be fully operational by 10.45 EET. Put Skydiver in the picture. Yes, sir. Right with you. Stevenson Base, this is Seagull X ray. Liftoff check complete. Liftoff clearance. Roger, Seagull X ray. You are clear to go. You know? 1045. Right. Brakes off. Airspeed building. One thirty. One forty. One sixty V one. VR. Rotate. This is Moonbase calling Sid. This is Space Intruder Detector. Pass your message. Seagull X-ray carrying VIPs and neutronic equipment is airborne. Track progress of aircraft until further notice. Keep sharp lookout for UFO. Please pass your code so that your instructions can be complied with. Stand by to receive code. Standing by. Thank you. Your code is correct. I have Seagull X-ray on scanners. It is on course. Speed, 1,500 knots. Moonbase computers confirm course correct. Airspeed, 1,500 knots. Right. Maintain tracking. Hydroplane's check complete, sir. Okay. Steer 042. Steer 042. 042. Maintain present speed. Maintain speed, 40 knots. Take over, will you, Bill? I'm going back to do my stuff with the passengers. All right.
Herr Mahler? Good morning. Colonel Alec Freeman. Ah, Colonel. I'd like to congratulate you and your team, Herr Mahler. This looks like the breakthrough we've been waiting for. Oh, not my team, Colonel. Uh, may I introduce our chief designer, Virginia Lake? How do you do, Colonel? Well, for the first time in my career, I wish I was flying subsonic aircraft. Uh, the trip would take that much longer. Uh, just in case anyone's interested, uh, I'm Phil Wade. Oh, how are you? Well, looks like you're the answer to all our prayers. Would you like to see the Eutronic equipment, Colonel? I think your equipment is fabulous, but uh, I am familiar with it. Really? Yes. For instance, I know that a Eutronic beam travels instantaneously. Almost instantaneously. Well, anyway, it means we'll be able to detect UFOs even when they're flying many times the speed of light in deep space. Go on. So, our moon base interceptors will have a chance to destroy them before they reach the Earth. Very good. I could tell you more over dinner. Don't you think you better get back to your little seat up front? <laughs> I suppose so. I'll be seeing you. Colonel, you were right. You are familiar with the equipment. Everything okay? Yes, sir. No sign of any activity. Good. Six green. Speed. Solid. Trajectory termination. Coming up. This is moon base to shadow control. Predicted trajectory termination. North Atlantic. Speed. Solid. Going for intercept. Out. Interceptors. Immediate launch. Interceptors. Immediate launch. Interceptors go. Right. This is moon base to all shadow stations. Moon base to all shadow stations. UFO sighted 428146 green will report. Attention all defense systems. This is a maximum security alert. Attention all defense systems. I say again, this is a maximum security alert. Condition red. Interceptors one, two, and three. Moon based interceptors. Stand by to set the sound control computer. Right. MCC reading one zero one. 
Missile firing five decimal four seconds. Skydiver. And get me Alec Freeman. Yes, sir. Gentlemen, Miss Lake, Shadow Control have just informed me that a UFO is approaching the North Atlantic. I'm afraid we must assume that this aircraft is its target. I'm going to reduce height in order to gain the advantage of cloud cover. This will mean we'll have to reduce speed, but of course in the dense atmosphere, so will the UFO. Presumably that increases Shadow's chances of intercepting it. Yes, it does. I'd fasten your seatbelts if I were you. Look, don't worry. It'll be OK. Anyway, we have a dinner date. I wouldn't let anything interfere with that. Thank you. Entering visual speed range. Radar and visual alert. UFO on radar track speed Mach 5. Thank God for the atmosphere. It's the best protection we have. A positive radar fix. the skydiver now. In position, sir. Right. Five, Stand by. Four, three, two, one, zero. Launch stations. Launch stations. Clear one. One clear. Clear two. Two clear. Ready for takeoff, sir. OK, lift off stations. Lift Check off boosters. stations. Checking boosters. Circuits. Cut boosters. H pulse circuits, okay. Cutting boosters. Relays, okay. Good luck, Skipper. Interlocks engaged. Stabilized gyro. Trigger circuits, okay. Right. Stand by for liftoff. Shadow control from Sky One, airborne. Position zero two zero, red. Roger, Sky One. Airspeed down to 600 knots. Right. Lower heat shield. Right. I don't like it. These clouds give about as much cover as a G-string on a belly dancer. Sky one seagull x-ray, over. Oh, Peter, am I glad to hear you. What's your position? Right above you. Level off at 20,000. Sky 
I want a single X-ray. Have you four on screen? Closing rapidly. Roger. Ten degrees port. Right. U4 at 12 o'clock. You are the target. Coming into attack. U4 went at Cloud Lair. Keep a sharp lookout. Roger. to shatter control. Reporting direct hit on UFO. It's gonna crash into the sea. Good shooting, Sky One. Come in, Seagull X-ray. Alec, are you okay? I've aged about five years, but we're still in one piece. Hello, Sky One. Follow it down, Captain. Use your reconnaissance cameras. Roger, will do. straight under. It seems to be breaking up. Hold it. There's a body. Please confirm. Did you say body? Yes, it's a body. and the other tracker stations will have the Utronic system fitted and operational within a week. Oh, that's just great. Oh, you look tired, Alec. Why don't you uh, help yourself to a drink? Thanks. I think I will. You never touch it, do you? Uh-uh. Self-control. Maybe drinking needs more self-control. When does, uh, it arrive? Any time now. We waited a long time for this one. Yes. Ten years. It's been ten years since we had the first confirmed UFO landing on Earth. And that was after a decade of speculation, reports, official denials, you name it. You know, Alec, when I was made commander of Shadow, I thought it was all going to happen. You've done a good job. The best. Well, I've tried. But how far have we progressed? I mean, what do we really know about UFOs? What are they? Where do they come from? What do they want? Yes. May 
Maryland Hospital Shadow Section. Your special patient has arrived, sir. We will use Underground Corridor 32 to Shadow Medical Center. Right. Well, maybe some of the answers are coming in now. Well done, Peter. Thanks. You're wanted in debriefing immediately. Right. See you later. What's the position, Doctor? Alive, but in a critical condition. Excuse me. What are the chances of survival? Well, he was equipped with an advanced apparatus that enabled him to breathe liquid. The helmet was removed as soon as he was picked up. An attempt was made to restore normal breathing. The problem is that there's still some liquid left in his lungs. So it's too early to say yet. Excuse me. Space travel in a liquid environment. The very thing we've been experimenting with. Yes. Well, apparently they've done it. I must ask you to leave now. Right. Let me know the moment you have anything, Doctor. Is he alive, Doctor? Yes. Well? Well, the general analysis has shown that he's humanoid. You mean, like us? More or less. Body temperature, three degrees paranormal, blood pressure rather low, muscular development poor. The skin has an artificial green coloration, probably absorbed from the liquid. The interesting thing here is that the hair hasn't picked up this tint, which suggests that the liquid contains a bioacrophilic compound. Also, the fact that the eyes were protected by plastic shell seems to support this theory. Anyway, we'll know more when we get the computer readout from the first electromedical check. It'll be a few minutes. solar system probably a hundred million million miles from Earth. It's incredible. What is? Well, we can't be certain yet, but this preliminary test shows organ and gland transplants. Heart, liver, left lung, thyroid. realize what this could mean, Alec? It's still theory. Theory. Fact. After almost ten years of possible, probable, and confirmed UFO incidents. Fact. On a number of fully documented occasions, mutilated bodies found after UFO attacks. Organs missing. Fact. An electromedical examination on the first alien we lay our hands on shows organ transplants. The doctors aren't certain. No. Not yet. But I'm willing to bet that our proof lies at the end of that corridor.
Dr. Schroeder? Intensive care unit. We have an emergency. I'm afraid he's dead. Mortem. 48 hours. Make it 24. Not the details. Just what really matters. The rapid aging isn't documented in the report. We're not sure why it happened, but it's certainly connected with the reaction of Earth's atmosphere on the body. Now, gentlemen, let's concern ourselves with the three main questions regarding UFOs. One, where do they come from? Now, the fact that the lungs were filled with an oxygenated liquid seems to indicate a subjection to phenomenal acceleration and fantastic speed over a long period long enough for the skin to pick up the green coloration of the liquid. Now, all this would appear to add up to an extended journey through space, perhaps several months, at many times the speed of light. Question number two, who are they? Well, obviously, in science and technology, several hundred years in advance of man. But everything in this report seems to add up to a dying race Hereditary sterility was evident. What, by using drugs and advanced transplant techniques, they could have found a way to stop the natural aging process. They are also highly intelligent, so they presumably come to Earth knowing the risk of contact with our atmosphere. Which brings us inevitably to question number three. Why do they come? This report indicates five major organ and gland transplants. In the case of the heart, tissue compatibility tests shows that it was human in origin. It came from Earth, gentlemen. Therefore, one of the reasons they must obviously come is to obtain organ replacements. But there may be other reasons. Imagine a dying planet in some distant corner of the universe its natural resources exhausted, its inhabitants sterile, doomed to extinction. Situation we may one day find ourselves in, gentlemen. So they discover Earth, abundant and fertile, able to satisfy their needs. They look upon us not with animosity, but with callousness, as we look upon our animals whom we depend on for food. Yes, would appear they are driven by circumstance across a billion miles of space, driven on by the greatest force in the universe, survival.
read the report, Alec? Couldn't put it down. Conclusions? I think we can be cautiously satisfied. Yes, I agree. Three UFOs, two knocked out by the moon base interceptors, and one destroyed in the atmosphere by Sky One. But there are still areas that need work. Interceptor launches, for example. Too slow. Yes. I want to see those astronauts spaceborne within two minutes of a red alert. Go to moon base, Alec. Drill them, flatter them, cajole them, whatever. But get those times down. Nice assignment. Where do I get my stick? No, Alec. That would be my way. I'm sending you because you're the right man for the job. Okay. This is Lunar Module to Moon Base Control. Have visual contact. Roger, Lunar Module. Have you on track for auto landing? The Lunar Module with Colonel Freeman on board is docking now. Hello, Gay. Shall we start? Hello, Nina. Hello, Colonel. How's everything going? Fine. Good. How are things with you, Joan? Fine, sir. Is that your report, Lieutenant? Yes, I think you'll find everything's in order. Sure, I shall. Shall we continue? situation might need reviewing. I'd like to see the level kept about 20% higher. Funny you should say that. Straker asked me to get your ideas on the subject. He had the same idea. Hi, Colonel. Hi, Lou. What sort of times are you making on the interceptor launches, Lieutenant? About 125 seconds flat. That's pretty good. Well, that about wraps it up for this month. I'll report a clean bill of health. You're fine. Ah, oh, you've been practicing. What are you working on anyway, Alec? One of Straker's projects. It's a beautification campaign. Well, I won't deny you could use it. <laughs> uh, space junk. Straker wants it all cleared. Well, the Astrophysical Commission takes care of any space junk. Anything with hazard potential. Straker has an idea it could be used by the aliens to crack our defense system. I'm beginning to think he may be onto something. Well, if your report shows it's a possibility, the junk gets cleared. So what's the problem? James L. Henderson is the problem. Cost, time, personnel, resources. You want reasons? Why not? I can give you a hundred. Listen, Henderson. Every item of space junk could be cleared in a matter of weeks, if the Commission gave its full support. As for the cost, I admit it would be high, but safety factors alone would justify it. Safety factors? Yes. My organization uses space more than any other. My pilots take more risks with that junk in one month than... My men do in a year. No, we need facts, Straker. Details, statistics. You just don't have them. Don't I? Of course you don't. I have my report. Your report. You promised that the Commission would not take a final decision on the clearance program until my report had been fully considered. And so it won't. However, I must confess I don't think it'll have that much influence. Well, if that's so, Henderson, it must be because you've already swung the Commission against it. Look, Straker, we've just completed the annual clearance of all items of space junk we consider a menace to navigation. The cost was more than double that of last year's operation. And worth every penny. Do you realize what a full clearance program would cost? Look, I'm not going to swap dollar signs with you, Henderson. Men's lives are at stake. 
Now, I want that junk cleared. Every last piece. His way, sir. Commander Straker. Freeman. Alec, I want that space clearance report. Well, he just got here, and there's data still missing. I don't care what's missing. Looks like Henderson's commission have already decided against a major space clearance project. We have to convince them otherwise. Well, give me 24 hours. It can't make any difference to you. But it could make a heck of a difference to the report. I want that report, Alec. I don't care what shape it's in. Just get it back here. Check Delta coordinates. Coordinates correct, sir. Earth orbit insertion, two hours, 13 minutes, eight seconds, sir. Right. Shadow HQ and Moon Base. Tell them we're going for EOI in 43 minutes, 29 seconds. Right, sir. 32 reports Earth orbit insertion at 130821, sir. Contact Sid. Tracking procedure green. Has Shadow HQ been alerted? Yes, sir. So everything's fine. Straker's not going to think so. He's expecting you. Entry angle, six decimal, 58 degrees. EOI, four minutes, 12 seconds. Sighting, sir, at 7035. That's in behind us. Confirm sighting. Affirmative, sir. And it's closing fast. Contact Moon Base. 32 reports unidentified sighting, sir. Signal red alert. His angle of re-entry is too steep. Turning to correct angle of re-entry. Loss of signal, sir. Still increasing. Something's pulling us off course. We've got to correct.
Package actuator, one decimal three, burn. Earth orbit insertion now. No response. We're in trouble. Anderson, all I need is another 48 hours. Another 48 hours? Yes. I can have a summary of the completed report on your desk by then. Now, you know I can't hold up the commission any longer. Why do you let me tell them that you decided to withdraw your proposal? I can get you off the hook. I intend to hold you to your word, to consider my report before making a decision on the clearance program. All right, Straker, I think I'm reading you. You want an alibi for that pilot of yours who killed himself and his crewman. You want to blame it on the presence of unclear junk. I want your word, Henderson. On one condition. Now, you consider your spacecraft was involved in a re-entry collision with an item of space junk. It's a possibility. Mm. A possibility, yes. So you suspend all lunar flights until we've fully investigated the uh, incident. You realize what you're doing? Yes, Commander, I do. I'm proving to the Commission that your organization in its present form is an expensive and unworkable luxury. <laughs> Miss Eland. Hard at it? I'm always hard at it. Sometimes you notice. How did it go, sir? Go? You know the code word Washington Square, Miss Eland? Well, not without looking it up. It's not one we use regularly. Mm. It's one I thought we'd never use. Well, what does it mean, sir? It means shutdown, cancel lunar flights, virtual isolation of moon base. Shadow control to all unit commanders, Washington Square. I say again, Washington Square. Immediate compliance, Washington Square. Colonel Foster, sorry to disturb you, sir. Code message from Shadow. Washington Square. I'll check it right away. There's no need. It means shutdown. What? More specifically, it involves a complete ban on all orbital flights. Freeman for you. Uh, put him on. Why the ban on moon flights? Henderson. But why? What about the report? Forget it. The commission are going to believe that it's an attempt to blame space junk on the Maddox crash. When in fact you think it was... Maddox. Pilot error. Take a rest. Enjoy the scenery, Alec. What's Straker trying to do? I don't know. He doesn't usually take a thing like this lying down. You couldn't call it typical. And then there's Maddox. What do we do about him? Forget all about it? Well, what else can we do? Any pilot can make a mistake. And you're only allowed one. Well, Steve Maddox. 
anyone can make a mistake. Not Steve Maddox. He's too experienced. All right. All right. What caused the re-entry error? They reported an unidentified sighting just before loss of signal. But the trackers couldn't pick up anything. Well, it must have been something. Space debris. Maybe. Maybe. And we just sit back and do nothing about it? No. We make sure it doesn't happen again. Get me 32's electronic log. Captain Maddox flight? Yes. What's going on here? What the devil's going on? Who's in that module? Colonel Foster. Why didn't you tell me? Any of you? Colonel Foster's orders. On no account were we to tell you until takeoff was imminent. And irreversible. Paul, cut your motors. I said cut your motors. Paul, this won't help. What won't? Taking out a module. If you're doing it for the reasons I think you are. I'm going to fly the same course Maddox flew. Under precisely the same conditions. Yes. You're crazy. What will it prove? For one thing, Maddox wasn't responsible for the loss of his ship. Well, if you do make me, it won't mean much. Depends on how I get through. And if you don't? Then I don't. Two hours, 38 minutes, 22 seconds. Roger. Have you contacted Straker yet? No. But I have a feeling he'll be contacting me soon. Sighting at galactic latitude 43 decimal 17. Longitude 14 decimal 53. But that's moon base operations area. Right. Call Commander Straker. too far for that. You're right, Foster. Much too far. Module 29 to moon base. Go ahead, 29. Re entry in six minutes, nine seconds. Roger.
EOI in four minutes, three seconds. Re-entry angle, five decimal seven three degrees, confirm. Two nine, confirm re-entry angle. Stay on 2-9. Two 2-9's nine. Two re-entry angle, sir. It's... Paul, adjust re-entry angle. Cut back to 5. Just he'll bounce off the Earth's atmosphere out into space. Foster? Foster here, I'm happy to say. Congratulations. But don't let my delight at your survival blind you to the fact that we have a few matters to discuss.
you've gone too far this time, Straker. I don't see it that way. You authorize a lunar flight. I authorize nothing. Look, Straker, I don't want to argue with you. You are responsible, whatever the circumstances. I agree. But Colonel Foster has proved that there is alien interference with our interorbital flights. Has he? Yes. And I almost got killed doing it. So you say? Yes, I say! My apologies. Thank you. I think it's time we laid our cards on the table, Henderson. All right. I'll tell you what I think of Colonel Forster's so-called proof. You knew the commission was going to turn down your space junk clearance program. So you instructed Forster to make this flight. Now, why should I do that? Because you were desperate for evidence. Go on. You authorized the flight to rig this information. But you won't get away with it. The commission convenes the day after tomorrow. By the time I get through, you'll be out of a job. Is that all? I'll see you at the commission meeting. Indeed you will, Commander. Really do it? Do what? Ease you out. You can try. What about our evidence? They've got to take notice of that. Evidence? What's it going to look like when Henderson claims that we manufactured it just to get a space clearance program? But we are right. Sometimes, Colonel, that's not quite enough. data's been processed, sir. Anything? Not that we can see. We should have been able to pick up something. There's nothing on Colonel Foster's log except a record of maneuvers. All right, send it down to Shadow Headquarters. So what do we do now? Any suggestions? No. But we can't just sit around. I've solved quite a few problems by just sitting around, as you call it, Colonel. I suggest you try it yourself sometime. Commander, the tracking report on Colonel Foster's flight has just come in from Moon Base. And? Oh, nothing unusual, sir. All right. So that leaves the MV3 detector. Yes, they're processing the data now. Well, we haven't had much luck so far. Maybe we're due for a break. The MV3 data, sir. Ah, oh, thank you. Looks like an SPS rocket of some sort. Like the limpet rockets used in debris destruction. Yeah. But it doesn't make sense. I mean, why would the aliens put a device like this into Earth orbit? Could be programmed to attack moonship flights. Blockade on moon base? Maybe. Why hasn't our radar picked it up? Space debris. It's based in one of those burnt-out rockets over there. 
Well, assuming you're right, which one could it be? Well, considering Maddox and I flew practically identical flight paths, it would have to be one of these two here, or Apollo 8 here, or B-47. Hmm. Four possibilities. I think we're on to something. assignment for you. I want you to launch the interceptors. Their mission? To destroy four pieces of space junk. I'll have control relay the coordinates direct to the astronauts. You mean space junk in Earth orbit? Right. And I mean use all three interceptors. All three? Yes, I know. It'll leave moon base undefended. Nevertheless, do it, Alec. At once. Now, wait a minute. Do you know what's going to happen when Henderson finds out about this? Ah, uh, yes. Henderson. Why don't you go over and tell him, Colonel? What? He'll go berserk. Yes. Take a nice, slow drive. Give me about half an hour. I hope you know what you're doing. Control to interceptor leader. Steer programmed course to Earth orbit. You will receive destruct details from Earth control. Out. Miss Eland, when James Henderson calls, tell him I'm unavailable. And when he arrives, sir? Oh, show him right in. The red carpet treatment. He's a very important man. You can expect him at 3 o'clock. <laughs> See Straker immediately. And before you try to fob me up with some damn fool excuse, I'm telling you I won't take no for an answer. But of course you may see him, Mr. Henderson. He's expecting you. Go straight in. Oh. Thank you. Straker. Ah, oh, Henderson. Uh, you're late. Uh, won't keep you a moment. Uh, studio business. Well, I think it's a great script, Mr. Steiner. There we are. Cleared for shooting. Thanks. You know, I like the way you operate. Oh, thank you. Your policy of non-interference. Some executives crawl all over you. Well, I can assure you, Mr. Steiner, you'll see very little of me. And I'll give you a film the studio will be proud of. Thanks again. Nice guy. Goodbye. Goodbye. All right, Straker. You know I never touch them. Voice identification. James Henderson. Identification positive. Henderson James L. Thank you. I tried to call you, Commander. I was told you were not available. Were they your instructions? Yes. I see. A very high-handed attitude. However, one more question. Is it true you ordered all three moon base interceptors to destroy certain items of space junk? Correct. Do you realize what you've done? You tell me. You've blatantly and openly defied the commission and left moon base in the Earth defenseless. 
It was my decision. I realized the implications. You had better start packing, Straker. When the commission hears about this, you're through. Aren't you interested in hearing my reasons? Oh, let's be kind. Let's put it down to a mental aberration, the strain of command. Get those interceptors back on moon base, Commander, while you can still give orders. Sorry, Henderson. Don't push your luck, Stricker. If moon base reports... Are UFO sighting? Stick around. I'm expecting it. Contact 248016 Red. Contact confirmed UFO 248136 Red. Red alert. Deputy Shadow Headquarters. UFO maintaining course 248204 Green. Get the termination. Request trajectory termination. Predicted termination 1F026 Southern England. Close enough. Its target is this studio. Maintain visual contact on countdown. Yes, sir. And order a complete shutdown. Shutdown? Everything. VHF, radar, the computers. Complete radio silence. Straker. As you said, Anderson, I can still give orders. Complete shutdown. Do it. Termination, eight minutes, four seconds. Commander Strigger, I'd like to talk to you in your office. You too, Colonel. I'm relieving you of your command. Colonel Foster will take over as of now. You can't do it, Henderson. You require the unanimous backing of the commission. You think I won't get it? Yes, I think you could get it. But it would take time. And this base is due to be attacked in a few minutes? Colonel Foster, assume command. Colonel. I take my orders from Commander Straker. Now, for the first time in your life, Henderson, you're going to listen. The aliens put a satellite into Earth orbit using a piece of space junk to cover. Why? A blockade on moon base? A logical reason, but obvious. Too obvious. In time, we would have located and destroyed it. So, the satellite was a decoy. A red herring for something bigger. An attack on this headquarters. They hoped the satellite would draw the interceptors from moon base. And you fell right into the trap. I acted as if the plan had worked, yes. It would take a UFO of great destructive power to destroy this underground base. I didn't want that hanging over our heads. All this guesswork does not explain the shutdown. Well, why make it easy for them? The UFO is probably programmed under our radio signals. I don't buy it, Straker. I just hope you've guessed wrong. Because if you're right, we're about to be killed. Still time for you to leave. All right. We all just sit here and wait. For what? A voice.
Moon base to shadow control. Come in, control. It's no use, sir. It's complete radio shutdown. What the hell is Straker playing at? Four minutes to termination. Straker, if we contact the interceptors, there may still be time. It's no good. They can't operate in the Earth's atmosphere. And the UFO's already in the stratosphere. Termination, one minute, 20 seconds. We're sitting ducks. Maybe. Switch everything on. Yes, sir. And get me Captain Carlin. Sir. Nice timing, Captain. Don't miss it. Roger control. Sky one to moon base. Request UFO fix and attack coordinates. We'll relay direct to outward computer. A streak and a sly old... Fox? 45 seconds. 40 seconds. 35 seconds. 30 seconds. Have visual contact. Going in for attack. Shadow control. U4 destroyed. Colonel Foster, did you get this operation computerized and we'll prepare it for the commission in my office? Well, Straker, I guess I owe you an apology. You were right. If you can take it, the Commission will recommend a complete clearance of all space junk. Thank you. Of course, it'll take time. The money has to be raised. Call it the Maddox Fund. Maddox? The pilot who was killed. Oh, yes. Maddox. Well? If only you hadn't been so positive that you were right. Like you? Henderson. I'll walk you to your car. about the new leave roster for moon base i thought you might it'll have to be changed and who tells them i might have guessed straker joe fraser is in reception sir who the reporter from the press agency did i make an appointment yes sir you agreed to the interview last week All right thank you miss eland Look, Alec, can't you handle it? No, you're head of the studio. It's you he wants to interview. Article for a heap of glossy film magazines. I'm no PR man. It won't be that bad. 
GPA will syndicate the story and keep the rest of the press off your back. Oh, Commander Straker, the refueling schedule, sir. Give it to Colonel Freeman. I'm about to be thrown to the press. Excuse me. Yes, Mr. Straker. I'm ready, Miss Eland. Yes, sir. Would you like to go in? Now, before we start, I must tell you that I'm a very busy man, Mr. Fraser. I must apologize. My name is Josephine Fraser. I sometimes find that in a man's world, Joe is more convenient. Hmm. Well, uh, is it a man's world? I think so. I hope you'll forgive me. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Please sit down. Well, fire away, Miss Fraser. And now, how long have you been head of the studio, Mr. Straker? Do you, uh, tape record the interview and take notes? I noticed the microphone in the front of your purse. Oh, that's to ensure I don't misquote you. And the notepads for my impressions. Of me? I think first impressions are so important. I think so, too. And the fuel checks are complete. Thank you, Skydiver. I'll tell Commander Straker. Black no sugar, sir. It's just how I like it. Well, I'll uh, walk you to your car. Well, thank you. I thought the age of chivalry was dead. Oh, no. I have to go up on the studio lot. It's on the way. Goodbye. These. Lieutenant, do you know where Commander Straker is? Yes, sir. I buzzed him a couple of minutes ago. He's on his way back from the lot. Fine. Messages? Callers? No, sir. Uh, only Miss Fraser. Miss Fraser? Yes, sir. She came back for her handbag. She left it in your office. You didn't let her go in there? Well, only for a moment. I see. Straker. Voice print positive. Identification, Commander Straker. I think first impressions are so important. Do you uh, tape record the interview and take notes? I think first impressions are so important. You didn't let her go in there. Well, only for a moment. Alec, Ford. Something wrong? Did anyone call me during the last 15 minutes? I bleeped you on the studio a lot. No, I mean the office up top, over the intercom. Well, yes, I tried there first. What did you say? Nothing. There was no answer. Well, you must have said something. It's important. Well, just... Commander Straker. There was no reply, so I clicked off. Commander Straker. Well, thank you, Ford. Could I be so stupid, Alec? That reporter had a tape recorder. It was left in the office. The chances are it picked up Ford's voice over the intercom. 
That's not so important. He only said Commander Straker. Assuming it was picked up, what could it mean to anyone? Not a lot, I agree. But maybe just enough for that woman reporter and her press friends to start snooping around. It was a girl. Yes. Miss Eland, get on to the Global Press Agency. I want to contact that Miss Josephine Fraser. It's urgent. Yes, sir. What was she like? Hmm? Oh, intelligent. Attractive? I'm afraid we have no one on our staff named Fraser. Are you quite certain? They've checked right through the personnel files. Yes, I see. But check with the other agencies. Right. Thank you very much. Yes, Miss Eland? I just called the press agency, sir. They've never heard of Miss Fraser. Well, check all the other agencies. I want her found. Thank you, Miss Eland. Intelligent, attractive, and a possible security link. It was my mistake. I'll take care of it. Well, I still think I should go. Well, it's simple enough, Alec. Find Miss Fraser and get the tape. A logical sequence. Well, you can look after things here. Sure. Well, there it is, Alec. The responsibility seat. The, uh, other side of the fence. I'll check in every few hours. Trace on positive track, course 428146, green. Speed 0, sol 8. Range 20 million miles, closing. Termination? It should be through any second. Tell Moon Base to launch the interceptors. Red alert. Red alert. Control to interceptors. Have UFOs on positive track. Green, one, four, zero. Moon base to shadow Two, control. Seven, Confirm UFO Green. sighting. Sol, zero, for intercept. Some ice, please. Yes, sir. Well, how far is the Grenville Motel? About eight kilometers down the road, sir. May I use your phone? Of course, sir. Thank you. Five million miles. I 
think first impressions are so important. I have a sighting bearing green zero four two, maintaining stationary position at 50,000 feet Earth's atmosphere. I have Commander Straker on the line, sir. He wants to know how things are going. Tell him everything's fine. No trouble. Well, do we have trouble? I don't think so. But we have an unidentified radar trace. Yes. Then something's there. I guess so, but... And it could be that UFO. It's practically stationary. The point is, do we have a UFO on our hands or don't we? Well, in my opinion, it's a million to one against. But of course, we'll maintain a full alert radar track now. Launch Sky One. Tell Waterman to investigate. Yes, sir. This is Shadow Control to Skydiver. Launch Sky One, investigate possible UFO, position 012302, red three. Roger Control, out. Launch stations. Launch stations. Check circuits. HP circuits okay. Relays okay. Okay for launch, Captain. Stations. Lift off stations. Check boosters. Checking boosters. We still have positive track. Green on three. Confirm radar fix. Control to Sky One. New position, 018294. Range 25 miles. I have it on internal radar. Should have visual contact in about a minute. I think I can see it. Panic over. It's a weather balloon. Fraser. How did you find me? The studio gate logs all license plate numbers. From that, I got your address. I called and they gave me a couple of places where I might find you. From there on, it was a simple process of elimination. Who do you work for? Myself. And sell whatever you get to the highest bidder, huh? Look, I'm sorry I lied. But if I hadn't said I was from GPA, you wouldn't have seen me at all, would you? Just give me the tape, Miss Fraser, and we'll call it a day. The tape, Miss Fraser.
played it back. There wasn't time. Right. Well, why don't you say it? If you just sign this, please, sir. No, oh, get out of here. I'll leave them on your desk then. Even a practice launch for skydiver needs an authorization. Hold it, Keith. I'm sorry. Can you imagine what Straker would have said? Yes, sir. I can imagine. What now? The police? Joe Fraser, freelance reporter, failed. I've only had one article published in the last month. Is it still there? Yes, Lieutenant. Ask Colonel Foster to come in and get control. You'll want to speak to Commander Straker. Right. I have Colonel Foster on the video link, sir. Oh, thank you. Hello, Paul. To see your face, where's Straker? I'll explain later. What's your problem? Well, we've picked up radio signals about 50 miles east of the base. It's some sort of vehicle. It's moving on an erratic course, but it's heading our way. Have you any idea what it could be? Not really. We've tried to make radio contact, but no joy. Could it be unmanned? It's possible. But if it maintains its present course and speed, it'll run straight into us. It'll be a couple of hours before there's any real danger. We'll get onto it right away. Lieutenant, I want an immediate rundown on all installations on the moon operating surface vehicles.
Why did you do it? It's a dirty world. Sometimes you have to cut a few corners. To get what you want. Like that car of yours. A car? <laughs> it's on hire. All part of the front. Does it matter? Well, let's say I'm interested. You've heard it all before. I'm a very good listener. With an ice-cold clinical outlook. Intelligent, attractive, and a possible security leak. <laughs> you don't believe me, do you? You know, if there's one thing I hate, it's eating dinner alone. Well, what do you think? It's a tough decision. Thanks. All right, tell Moonbase to launch the interceptors. Right, sir. Interceptors one, two, and three, immediate launch. Repeat. Interceptors one, two, and three, immediate launch. <laughs> Nice. Well, it suits me. Well, I'll get things moving in the kitchen. Can I help you? No, I can handle it. I left the wine in the car. I'll get it. Oh. Thanks. Yes, Miss England? I have Commander Straker on the line, sir. Oh, you better tell him... Tell him everything's under control. He says he's glad to hear it, and he'll be back tomorrow morning. Oh, Miss Elin, I want you to do a voice check for me. It's Miss Fraser. Uh, just routine. You mean a G6, sir? Yes, that's right, Miss Elin. The full G6. I understand, sir. Right. Record immediately. Yes, yes. Come and say hello to Miss Eland. Hello, Miss Eland. You're working very late tonight. Hope to see you again soon. Goodbye now. Goodbye. Yes, that'll be fine. Good night, Miss Eland. Well, uh, why don't you help yourself to a drink, and I'll go out and break out the can opener. Hey. Hmm? Thanks.
can see it. I'll go down and radio back a photograph. Transmit a print of this to Shadow Control. You know, Ed, you're a terrific cook. I just follow the instructions on the can. <laughs> well, the wine was great. You should have had some. You know, you have a nice home here. It's a place to sleep. You know, it's funny, Joe. I enjoyed today. Ever since my divorce, I've kept myself pretty much to myself. You know how it is. Yes, I do know. Russian, from a base about 120 miles east of Moonbase. Russian? Yes, it's a mobile rig used for commercial mining in rich surface ore areas. Get onto their base. Tell them unless they divert their machine. I'll explain the situation, sir. We understand your concern, but we still can't. Uh, Establish radio contact with the crew. Something must have gone very seriously wrong. Watching Snarya Ruski Melodia is a Molly Glazar. All we can do is to keep trying. Get me shadow control. We've contacted the Russian base. There's a crew of two on board, but no one can contact them. Is the radio link OK? It seems to be. They just don't answer. What's the vehicle's position now? About 20 miles east of the base. The Russians have a surface mobile on the way, but it won't get there on time. Well, send out a moon mobile. Try to establish visual contact with the crew. Right.
We should be making visual contact any minute. Yes, I'll make it about two miles. Straker. Yes. I see. Is there anything else, sir? No, that'll be all right. Right. What's the matter, Ed? Get out. What's wrong? I know. That's what's wrong. One article published in the last month. The car on hire. You were right about that the first time. You earned it. The hard way. Just what did you have mapped out for me? Did you plan to take me for all you could get? Or maybe something more cozy? Like an idyllic weekend somewhere, and a guy with a camera who just happens to burst in at the right time. Maybe at first. Oh, come on, don't give me that. Don't tell me there's an emotion left in that pretty little head. You must be getting soft. Soft? That's the way you get eaten alive. Oh, you wouldn't understand. It's a man's world, remember? Get me a direct radio link with the Moonmobile. Right, sir. I have Colonel Freeman for you, sir. Right, put him on. What's the position? We've just established visual contact and we're trying to get through to the crew. Without much success. Right, fire a warning shot. A warning shot? Look, you're less than five miles from moon base. That's a civilian vehicle. Fire that shot. Right. Range 480 yards. Angle 0 decimal 28. Not too close. <laughs> Try another one, as close as you dare. Yes, sir. Range 320 yards. Angle 0 decimal 24. No reaction. You're certain they saw the warning shot? If it had been any closer, they'd have been part of it. Stop. You mean? I mean shoot to stop them. That's my decision. I'll take the responsibility. Do you read me? Look, give us a couple of minutes. We're going to try something. <laughs> Come
Come in, M3. Come in, M3. Come in, M3. M3 to control. Control to... Let me speak to Colonel Foster. He's trying to get aboard the rig, sir. What? Has he made it? I'm not sure. I can't see him. If he's not inside... Listen, they're both incapable. The air pressure's down. They could be suffering from anoxia. How far away is it now? 1,500 meters. This is a red emergency alert. Seal all airlocks, all personnel to carry out decompression drill. That's of yours, huh? Yeah. The English, yeah. American. Yeah. Yeah. What's what? Get onto the Russian base. Find out how to what stop this thing. Was... Yes, I understand. The. Uh... Quickest way to stop it is to throw the red master power switch. It's uh, situated uh, left of center on the control panel. Right. There's a red switch on ah, the control panel. Yes, I can see it. That's the master power control. OK. Ah, Ivan, how far is it from moon base? Just a few hundred yards. There must have been a slight pressure leak. They were suffering from a lack of oxygen, inducing a sort of drunkenness. Drunkenness? Like drinking too much whiskey. We call it inoxia. And we know it in the same way, except our description would substitute vodka for whiskey. On behalf of Sovatex, I would like to thank you for your cooperation. Good morning, sir. Ford? Oh, it's all sorted out. 
Yes, sir. Clever girl, Miss Fraser. You were pretty quick with the voice print. Hello, Miss Eland was enough. The international crime computer did the rest. She's got a record as long as you're on. Is she wanted by the police? Not at the moment, but she won't stay out of trouble for long. Her kind never do. Maybe. Where's Colonel Freeman? In your office, sir. Hello, Alec. Hello. Well, I hear you had quite a day. You could say that. Paul Foster might have lost his life. Ordering them on board that rig like that. Tough decision. The right one, of course. It wasn't quite like that. Well, whatever way it happened, Alec, you were responsible. I certainly have to hand it to you. Hmm? That Miss Fraser, she didn't have you fooled for a moment. That'd be me, I'd have probably got myself emotionally involved or something. Yes, I can see how it could happen. Well, say, Alec, I... <laughs> Well, it's all yours. Now, the uh, other side of the fence. 